Hi, I'm Mike, and this is an intro. Alright, as I said in the title, this is going to be my top five picks for Narset Commander, or EDH, Elder Dragon Highlander, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, I am not going to be looking at the combo cards. What we have here are going to be the five cards that I think are just the most useful without being something that will immediately end the game. Although, if used right, they will definitely lead to that. Granted, any card used right will do that, but that's another matter altogether. So, to start us off, in no particular order, except for the last one, we have Brainstorm. This is an old standard card. Well, standard is in everyone loves it, rather than the set, although it was one time, but again, another matter. This card, normally it's because you can draw three that everyone loves it, and in this deck that works amazingly well too, but the ability to put two cards back in a Narset deck is almost unbeatable. Narset's biggest advantage is that you can get the four cards from your library free whenever you attack with her. That means that anything up there, as long as she remains on the field, can be cast at its regular speed. Brainstorm, if you get it with Narset, okay, that's nice. It might set up your next attack if you get one. But it's not that good that way. But it's a one-drop instant speed that can let you put anything back from your hand. And anyone who's played Narset knows the last thing you want is for your bomb, the card that will win you the game, to be stuck in your hand. This card takes care of that and fixes the problem altogether, which is why it is one of the five best cards and easily the easiest one to put on this list. The next card, number four, Sudden Disappearance. Now, it's a little expensive and it's at a sorcery speed, so it's not perfect, but for what it does... It removes all non-land permanents. It exiles all non-land permanents the player controls for a single turn. It's not as good as a board wipe, but it is so perfectly fit that all you need is the one colorless, or five colorless and one white, and then it completely takes care of your opponent's field, regardless. Got a bunch of hexproof, indestructible creatures with stuff that makes them really, really hard to get rid of? Exile them all. Got a horror like a horrible set of enchantments out that makes it impossible to do damage, exile them all. It is the best way I can think of just to say, okay, goodbye field, I'm going to hit you now. It is easily one of the best cards you can use. Because the colorless aspect of it makes it much easier to cast. All you need is one white. It's for the same casting cost as Narset. And if you happen to get it with her, it's free. So it makes your next attack, if you get one, perfectly safe. And, if it's cast right after she comes out, as long as she has haste, or if it's the turn after, you know she's going to have a full field to hit with no real threats. Why, this card is just too good not to have. Number three. Proteus Staff. Okay, I know I said no combo cards, and to be fair, it's not really a combo. This card on its own is the combo. It lets you take Narset off the field, or one of the possible tokens you're using, if you have something that produces them, and shuffle it, uh, and then put it, well, let me read the card. Put target creature on the bottom of its owner's library. That creature's controller reveals card from the top of his or her library until she reveals a creature card. That player puts that card into play, and the rest on the bottom of his or her library in any order. Play it as a sorcery speed, and only one time. Or any time you can play as a sorcery speed. Now, the way it's used in Narset is that either the token I mentioned or Narset gets put on the bottom and you go through. I favor a Narset with only her as the only creature, which makes this thing broken because you can literally reorder your library to take advantage of her perfectly, and it ends with her being back on the field. Or if you haven't cast her yet, it's perfectly set up for her. But it also says target creature, so it can be easy removal for anyone you don't like. Say your opponent's general is really, 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 really scary. <clears throat> cough, cough, Godo. It's a personal vengeance I have against that card. But that's not important right now. This can get rid of him. It'll put him on the bottom and pull up the next creature. And in a lot of decks, the next creature isn't as scary as the general. So not only is it creature control, but it also lets you take care of your own board state. It is so perfect for what you can do. And for a three drop with a three activation cost... It's completely worth it every time. Number two. Seize the day. Before I read the card, which, well, it's pretty simple. 
I just got to say, how the hell is this only a $3 card? I mean, it is cheap to cast, cheap to buy, and it has a flashback cost that's even better. This should be a staple in every red deck. And I have never seen it used in the least in the area where I play meta. And this is just... <sighs> For 7 mana, you get 2 extra attack steps. In a Narset deck alone, if you have pretty good land drops or artifact excel, you can cast this right after Narset comes out the next turn. You'll probably have the land by then. Get it twice. And if Narset survives all three attacks, that's at least 12 cards that you've had exiled and possibly cast. If you can't win the game off that, just with this and the flashback alone, it's probably because you chose to draw it out. The card is unbeatable for what it does. And, considering it's not, well, like I said, a combo piece, it's insane. Honestly, it... Again, it's a $3 card! And that's only because there was a markup. Like, how it stays that way, I have no idea, because it is amazing. And the final card, and I will admit, this card, I wasn't actually really certain of it at first. It's not nearly as overpowered as the last two, especially. But for what it does, I think it was completely worth it. So, number one. Boros Charm. I know, I know, considering how much I built up the last two, this doesn't seem nearly as scary at first. And, to be fair, the first ability isn't very relevant in Commander, or EDH, depending on what you like to call it. Just dealing 4 damage to target player, without the option of just blowing someone's creature, doesn't sound that good, and it's not. The second two abilities, though. Well, let's start with the second. The third. Double Strike. Target creature gains Double Strike until end of turn. Instant Speed Double Strike is never a bad thing. And for Narset, considering she's a 3-2 First Striker on her own, that's not bad. Swinging for at least 6 general damage is not going to hurt you. Swinging for 6 general damage, and then swinging again, and possibly swinging again with Seize the Day, that's scary! Even if it's not general damage, that is not a small amount to shake your stick at. Or, in this case, card. But what really makes this thing scary is the permanents you control are indestructible this turn. Against any board wipe deck, against any deck that can kill Narset, this right here stops it. Because Narset doesn't need to do damage for her to be scary. She just needs to attack and survive through the turn. This card guarantees it. Because she can't be uh, spot removed because she's hexproof already. So the only way to do it is to kill her flat out or to destroy the board. If this stops it, which it will, you pretty much say that if I win this turn, this is the card that will make sure you can't do anything about it. Add on to that that it's a two cost on its own. So even if you don't get it free with Narset, you can cast it out of your hand without any issues. That, and if you're trying to build up a set, or the cards you need to get Narset out, and someone tries to wipe off your field, this includes lands. So if someone's trying to Armageddon, nope, they can lose their lands, you're set. Again, this card just makes it so easy for Narset to stick around, for her to pull off her combos. It's worth to have it in every deck with her, because it's just so easy to abuse it and to use it well. All right, well, like I said, that's my top five cards for Narset. And to be fair, they are all really good cards and not that expensive, depending on which copy of Brayden Storm you buy. So you won't break the bank putting these in. Maybe next time I'll do a combo card set. But right now, these are just the five cards that everyone should have in their Narset deck. Granted, Proteus Staff, I would only put it in there if you're not doing creatures. If you're doing creatures, it's good for spot removal. But that's another thing altogether. I'm Mike. Later.